Hello everyone and welcome to Star Citizen Alpha 3.3.6 where I've been enjoying the free flight week tremendously because with the new update things actually seem to be running smoothly. It might not look as smooth on the whole because I'm recording at the same time and I don't have a capture computer, I'm using the same system to handle both and I've capped the frame rate to 30 to try and smooth things out but it's a lot better than my previous experiences in the game and miraculously no crashes. So and now as you might have noticed, it's a bit choppier right at the beginning when I'm getting out of bed and that's because it's trying to read stuff from the drive and it was worse when I was using a regular hard drive. I've moved it over to an SSD and so that initial choppy, choppiness has mostly gone away because of that. But there's still a bit of it while it's trying to load models and textures and that sort of thing. But uh, loading time into the game was about a minute and 15 seconds. I cut that part out. And uh, you'll notice uh, numerous elevators. Uh, those take about 10 to 15 seconds. And they are loading the next scene, I assume, during that time. And uh, here we are approaching an elevator. There's a habitation area. And this is on the world called Hurston. And the specific city is called Lorville. I think it's the only city on Hurston. Hurston is a full-size planet. Well, I say full-size. We'll probably talk about Kerbin size. Uh, but it's got a 100-kilometer atmosphere. And uh, this is a city that we are in. Lorville is where the convention is, where you can rent out craft for free. And that's the whole point of the free flight weekend. Or week. Uh, each day... They've had the craft from a particular manufacturer that you could rent for free and try out, and I've been enjoying that. If I had been a clever YouTuber, I would have probably made a video of this at the start of the week rather than at the end where everybody already knows about it. And there's nighttime at Lorville, and you can see Tisa Spaceport is where we're headed to. We're currently in the residential area. And uh, yeah, it, it has a day-night cycle. I think I've seen either it's two hours or every four hours. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. Unfortunately, at nighttime you can't get all of a sense of Lorville, but I'll make future videos. I'm sure now that I I have further confidence that I might get something resembling frame rates in this game. <laughs> so uh, they've got a I don't know if it's a monorail or just a train system here, a metro. It's probably two wheels, but I didn't actually check. But uh, yeah, so we have to take the train over to the spaceport. But yeah, uh, I was too busy enjoying it and also trying to tweak settings. This is in lo uh, like low settings. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how it looks in Ultra, uh, but I've I've tried to put the settings low so that I can record and uh, play on the same system. So yeah, and including limiting the frame rate, of course. So it looks pretty good to me, uh, given the settings, and I understand that on Ultra settings it's not supposed to be like playable with current hardware, right? It's supposed to have some longevity. After all, they're still in development, and it's going to be a while uh, before they've got all the things put together as I'm waiting for the train to get off here, yes. Uh, unfortunately, because it's nighttime, you don't get a really good sense of the view out the windows, but it looks pretty good. So Star Citizen obviously has a wealth of art assets here, and uh, we're ma mainly looking for, I think, uh, as I understand it, fixes to combat mechanics, and the story mode, Squadron 42, which is the single player campaign mode, but that's more down the road. Uh, as far as the multiplayer area, which we are in, of course there are other players running around. I've been on the train with other players before, and that's been amusing. Uh, but uh, there, there's a lot of stuff that, of course, they promised their backers that they have to deliver on, and it, uh, it generally looks like they are trying to deliver on everything, which is impressive. Uh, yeah, so I look forward to it, and I need to sort of discover this world. I feel like I'm exploring it, right? I mean, a lot of people who have been into Star Citizen for a long time, like when they started backing it, um, they, they know all about this stuff, they've been watching all the, uh, the streams from Star Citizen and everything. So, I, I do not know all those things. <laughs> I, I get to explore now, now that I can do so myself with uh, reasonable performance. And, you know, my, my standards for reasonable performance are fairly low, but uh, I understand pe some people can't uh, deal with any game under 60 FPS, so I'm, I'm more tolerant. 
One thing I want to do is try and earn this ship that is to our right. And that's the M50. I, I, I'm probably, I probably don't have the reflexes to be much of a racer in Star Citizen, but I still want to race. <laughs> I don't care. And this is actually the Interceptor version, but uh, you can see it's 700,000 Alpha UEC, Alpha credits. So they're not going to carry on until uh, into the full release. I've currently got 10,000 Alpha credits. And so I've got a lot of earning to do. And maybe I'll see what the potential is for that so that I can own... I don't know if it, uh, owning it in Alpha carries on to the main game or not if I buy this for 700,000. But maybe? I don't know. I don't know that. Maybe you guys know that. Um, so other options, of course, if you want to try out ships in Alpha is to rent them. Uh, you don't have to work the credits and try and buy them. You just use rental credits, which you can earn in various ways, and that's cheaper, but you only get them for a week, basically. Now, obviously, you might have seen things about people paying hundreds of dollars for ships and stuff like that. Uh, that's only if you specifically want to back the game and you want to give them money. And uh, frankly, uh, after seeing how it is with this update, uh, I'm, I'm encouraged them to give them a little bit more than the initial package. I paid 45 bucks for the initial package. And, uh, you know, uh, if it helps move them along, uh, I am more encouraged now than I have been before. But some people have been really into it and uh, buying the ships like that uh, in order to support the game. But there's no requirement to do that. You'll be able to earn the ships yourself in the game without any problems presumably though the economy needs to be balanced a bit uh, right now there aren't sufficient missions to do it easily to earn ships easily um, the missions are not quite as lucrative as they might need to be or there needs to be more variety of missions people do do mining mining is uh, I I've heard good things about mining but I'm not entirely sure uh, how easy it is to get into. I haven't tried it out yet. That's something I want to do. And maybe mining will be the way I earn my M50. We will see. Now, the day I'm here at the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, they were showing the exotic spacecraft and not from one of the regular manufacturers. And that's unfortunate. I should have uh, recorded it during the regular manufacturers because there are some awesome ships available. Uh, there's some huge ships available too, and that would have been good to um, show you. But uh, this time we have exotic ships, which is mainly, I think, alien ships. I'm not sure. And here we are at the expo. And the expo showroom floor looks nice. It's a nice place to hang out, that's for sure. And the first thing we have to our right is actually sort of a space bike. A hover bike. I, I tried it out, but I couldn't get out of the hangar bay because I didn't know how to go up. I mean, it is a hover bike, so it hugs close to the ground. But if you're in a hangar that has a door on the top, how do you get out of that? And I ended up killing myself <laughs> and uh, waking up in, in the bed again. This is actually the Anvil Arrow. It's uh, sort of the showcase ship, the new ship that they have. Obviously parked, it's got the wings up. But uh, otherwise, we've got some of these, I think the Vandal uh, ships. So there, there are alien species in the game, or are intended to be. Aopa, uh, Aopoa? I don't know how to pronounce that. See, I haven't uh, really been paying attention. I really ought to. Definitely ought to catch up on all this stuff. But maybe it's best to explore a bit before I watch stuff where other people try to explain it to me, just because that's always more interesting. And then there's a, this Esperia, and these all look like Cylon ships from Battlestar Galactica. I mean, frankly, they, they, they are Cylon ships. <laughs> they just are. So, uh, but I like the look. I like Cylon ships. I like Cylon Raiders. I, I approve. I'll look forward to earning one. Or, I don't know if you can. I mean, if they're alien ships, I wonder how easy it's going to be to earn one. But this one I, is the one I decided to try. So, of course, we're going to have some attempts at flight in here. And this glaive is the one. Uh, of course, I rented all of them ahead of time. You can climb on the merchandise, apparently, and get a good look at it. 
I don't know, I find it hard to believe that this is the low quality version of the game. It's already better than anything I've ever seen, so. Anyway, so I think it's time to try it out. We can't really check out the cockpit in here. Some of the ships, uh, I was able to access the cockpit or the interior from the showroom floor, but I didn't really know how to get in there like this. So anyway, we have to go back upstairs or up the elevator and we need to go to where we can access our rented ships and those we've purchased but the only ship I actually own right now is the Aurora that comes with the base package so ship retrieval console you have to press F to act uh, to interact with anything and then click on it so I have all these other rented ships basically everything on that floor and they also for this week gave everybody the Drake Cutlass Black just so they could get around and then there that uh, glaive is what we want and be sure to pay attention to which to the following landing pad which hangar it goes to because otherwise you won't know where to go so hangar four good and so i run over here check the signs it's like an airport you have to go to the right gate and we need gate four so that's this one the elevators all go to different places And I spent a time waiting for the elevator, by the way. I click on that ele elevator button, button a few times, so it's very realistic in that respect. Uh, <laughs> more realistic than I need it to be, but, uh, yep, okay, hangar 4. I'm not too sure about this hovery stuff, but I guess it's alright. Interesting when we're in the elevator and there are other people, I just have to sort of hope that they're going the same way I'm going. And that's so far worked out pretty well, actually. I don't know if the elevators respond when people push two different buttons. I don't think that's going to work out. Uh, most of the time there's only one way to go, so it's alright. So here it is. In the showroom it was in full flight mode and right now it's got its wings folded up because it's landed. It's got skids that it lands on, you can see. And the way we access the cockpit here is different for every ship. Uh, there's this bottom thing and you see enter pilot seat again holding F and then click the animations that they have when getting into the cockpit are interesting for this one uh, not too sure about that they, they still need to do some work on animations and also maybe how to access things because I'm trying to figure out how to turn it on up oh, there 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 uh, flight ready yes yeah, that's what we need to do. Okay, and then speaking of animations, we have to use our contact list to contact the spaceport to get permission to leave, because otherwise there's there's a door on top of us. And that guy's animation is creepy as all heck. Every time. So, but anyway, um, let's take a look up to check that the door is opening. Yes, it seems to be. Now, the spaceport at Hurston, basically there's this small spaceport area which is safe to fly in. But everything else is Thank like a no-fly zone because they're buildings and they don't want people doing nasty things. So it's like a shoot on Please site if you pass that and orange zone. Area for processing. Yeah, so gotta if, if you're landing here at Hurston, you gotta be careful about where you fly. Otherwise, they will kill you. This game is overall not shy about finding ways to kill you. So I think exterior view is warranted here. It's a nice city. I still don't know how to control the camera properly. I really need to learn how to control the camera a little bit better and know some of the other keys for changing camera modes because it's a shame this would be a great sort of cinematic thing going on. And we, we see sort of a sunrise on the horizon and I decide that I want to get into daylight eventually to see what the planet looks like there. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see Lorville in daylight, but we can go around to daylight side since it's relatively close. The atmosphere ends at 100 kilometers. Now, this doesn't have proper orbital velocity things, okay? This is... it doesn't physics like that. It, it, it's sort of physics. It has gravity. There is gravity. There is drag. And you can feel that. 
and there are little reaction thrusters and there's inertia. When I turn, we lose velocity. But it doesn't work the way it's supposed to work in orbit. So if you're used to Kerbal Space Program, that's not what's happening here. There are things here that work like they're supposed to, but inside the ships, for instance, there's artificial gravity. So expect that. They're just sci-fi things for convenience in quite a lot of situations. But there's our map. The map often gets zoomed in too much. You have to zoom out a lot. But this is just uh, this planetary system with its moons. And there are other planets. There's just one solar system right now. But um, I tried to plot for another moon. Uh, Hurston is the main planet, but it has the moons around it. But I couldn't figure out how to access my quantum drive in this ship. It's normally B. And uh, I didn't see any indication of quantum drive. So I tried out the weapons. So that's what the weapons sound like on this. And then re-enter. And so we do have re-entry effects. Though uh, some of them, some of the flashing seems to occur inside the cockpit, so I don't know how that works. But there are re-entry effects as you pass through the atmosphere going down at high velocity. The main interesting thing is that there is a seamless transition between being in space and getting to the ground. There isn't even elite sort of glide mode that occurs to try and transition you between the two. It's all continuous. And so I'm going to try and capture that a little bit. So we're going to go sort of straight down into this rugged terrain here. It's a very deserty planet, Hurston is. You get the sense that it might have been properly living once, but they've more or less ruined it. And there are a lot of scrap heaps and wrecks and such strewn about, especially around Lorville. Uh, we're quite a ways from Lorville now, and so we're out in the desert. And the different moons and planets all have their own characteristics, but I think they're mostly one biome sort of situations. Um, typical of sci-fi, but uh, not typical of... Well, I don't know. When you think about it, Mars is sort of one biome, except for the Arctic re polar regions. And I imagine Venus is mostly one biome, but not sure. So it's... Uh, and moons of Jupiter and all probably are one sort of look to them. I'm not... So while there's often an objection that says, well, planets and moons ought to not just have one biome and, you know, one landscape uh, throughout their entire surface, frankly, quite a lot of the planets and moons in our own solar system seem to. There are, there are some interestingly dynamic ones, like Pluto, and of course Earth, but I mean, Pluto is really dynamic, it seems. I mean, that's, that's a quite varied terrain. And, but but then for every Pluto you get a Mercury. I mean I know Mercury fans are gonna say okay well, uh, it's it's got this sort of difference over here. But uh, for for the most part it looks all the same to me. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of worlds that it, it mostly looks all the same. And if you're a geologist you know the differences. But for us us naive peoples we don't. So yeah, but. I'm, I'm quite satisfied with the look of this planet so far. That is looking pretty nice. And I've, I've flown, you know, to the planets of Elite and I like those too. But this is uh, quite, quite a look. <laughs> this, is, this is spectacular. And I, I've just been breathless in my flights, taking a look at these landscapes and enjoying them. Especially with these fantastic looking ships. And again, uh, my only regret is that I can't control the external camera properly to get the shots that I really want. So here we see, it, it's not the angle that I want here, really. Especially when I turn, I'd rather have a locked camera, and I just don't know how to get to the locked camera. So... Uh, you can see me fiddling around with the camera, but then every time I turn, it's sort of in the wrong position to capture what I wanted to capture. But you can sort of see that the flight dynamics are simplified. Obviously, do not expect like it to feel like flying on Earth or around Kerbin even. Uh, that is not how it's going to work as far as I know. And of course, it is not a finished game yet. I, this caveat has to be put out there every single time that it is in alpha, which means it's not feature complete. Beta is feature complete and they're trying to squash bugs. It's in alpha, 
which means they're still adding features, lots of features that they need to add, and the economics in particular need to be fixed before it's going to be ready to go. And so there's a lot that needs to be worked out. I don't know how PvP is because I haven't done it yet, but presumably that's still something that needs to be worked out as complicated combat mechanics has been mentioned as a thing. But here, let us land here. And again, you can land anywhere on this planet. And the moons. There is a gas giant. Uh, one of the planets around uh, in the solar system is a gas giant that you probably shouldn't try to land on. That would not be a good idea. But the rest are all good. And I gingerly bring it down in external view. And it's time to step outside, which can be done. So turn off, turn off the ship as we see some dust flying up there. Power off. Press H to get out of the seat. Those are the two most important keys, F and H. F to interact with stuff, H to get out of seats and beds and everything like that. So we have some cacti. There are some cacti around here. And that is the look of the thing. Now, something they need to fix, you can hear when I run, it sounds like I'm running on like a deck of a ship, you know, some metal thing. And then, and then it changes to proper dirt sounds. But occasionally, when I get close to my ship in particular, it starts sounding like I'm running on on metal or something like that. So there are quirks like that. There we go. That's what I mean. So there are quirks like that need to be fixed. But hey, it's 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 coming along. It might be it might be a few years before it's like fully released. But I think. I think I can explore here, is basically what I'm saying. If it's a tech demo, let, let me let me see what I can see. And I think I'm going to have some enjoyments with that. And maybe I'll post some videos if I capture something really spectacular like this particular scene. Uh, I, this is a very screenshot friendly game so far. So anyway, that's been my impression during this free flight week. and. I will continue to enjoy it. I am also going to try out X4, which is being released tomorrow. And I hope to post some videos on that, possibly many videos. So it's gonna be a sci-fi sort of time on my channel. Uh, maybe I'll throw in some Elite too. I've, I've got some nice voice packs for Elite that I've meaning to use, uh, involving William Shatner, Brent Spiner, and, and others, so. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we'll have that too and have some sci-fi fun in the midst of Kerbal Space Program fun as well. Alright, so on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.